When I was a kid, mall pretzels were a special treat whenever I could convince my mom to let me have one. And these protein pretzel bites remind me of those mall pretzels from my childhood. In a serving of them, there are 219 calories with 14 and a half grams of protein. I make all of my recipes using metric weights, and because of the hydration of the dough is very important here, I recommend that you do the same. Here's how I make the dough. Into a small bowl, add 20 grams or two tablespoons of oat flour, 16 grams or two tablespoons of cornstarch, 12 grams or two tablespoons of vanilla casein protein powder, one gram or a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and then 0.2 grams or one pinch of salt. Mix all of those dry ingredients together until they are evenly distributed. Then you can add in your wet ingredients, starting with 40 grams or two and two thirds tablespoons of 2% milk, and then 15 grams or one tablespoon of liquid egg whites. Stir those liquids into the flour to form your dough and keep stirring until the dough is fully hydrated. It's likely that your dough might be a bit sticky. Place this into the fridge for five to 10 minutes and it will help it firm up so that it becomes workable. Now I know that whenever I put out a recipe that uses casein protein powder, people will ask if they can use whey. The answer is no, absolutely not. Whey and casein are two different ingredients. On the left here, we've got 10 grams of whey and 20 grams of water. And on the right, 10 grams of casein and 20 grams of water. We're gonna do a little experiment to show you why whey and casein are different. Some of the properties that make whey and casein different as a protein supplement are the same properties that make them different as an ingredient to bake with. Whey is a fast digesting protein and when you mix it with water, it incorporates fairly easily. You can see how soupy it is here. Casein is a slower digesting globular protein and when it interacts with the digestive juices in your stomach, it folds over on itself and creates globs that take longer to digest. This is why it can work to make a dough. You can see how much thicker it is than the whey. It would be impossible to create a dough from the whey, so don't even try it, it won't work, you'll waste your time. I use vanilla optimum nutrition casein as my protein of choice, but it's not unique and it deserves no special recognition. Any of these brands have worked for me in the past, but for some reason I always come back to Optimum. Once your dough has cooled and is firm to the touch to where it doesn't stick to your fingers, pull it from the fridge. If it's too cold, you'll want to work it between your hands for a bit to warm it and help loosen it up. Then you can start forming it into a rope. There is no gluten in this dough, so you'll need to be a bit gentle, otherwise it will break apart. I begin the rolling process in my hands and then I move it to a work surface and roll it out until it's about a half an inch in diameter and then I'll take a knife and cut it into one inch bite-sized pieces. Before you start rolling out the dough, you'll want to start a pot of water over medium heat. You want this water to be lightly bubbling and not quite yet boiling. Add in one teaspoon or four grams of baking soda and stir it in. The baking soda is what helps give pretzels their crunchy outside and soft, chewy center. You're going to lightly boil these pretzel bites for only about 30 seconds, so you want to move quickly. I like to stack them all on a spatula so that I can get them all into the pot at the same time. After 30 seconds, pull them from the water using a spider or a slotted spoon and place them onto a piece of parchment paper that will fit inside of your air fryer. Arrange them nicely and sprinkle over a bit of coarse salt and spray the tops lightly with some oil. Place the pretzel filled parchment paper into your air fryer and air fry at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for five to seven minutes or until they are golden brown. I usually eat these pretzel bites with some plain mustard, but today I made honey mustard by mixing together mayo, Dijon mustard, and honey. I didn't measure anything, I just let the Lord decide how much of each I was going to use. Once the pretzel bites have browned to your liking, they are ready to eat. Pull them from the air fryer, plate them up, and serve them with whatever dipping sauce you decide on. For the entire recipe, not including any dipping sauce, these pretzel bites have 219 calories and 14 and a half grams of protein. The first time I made these, I couldn't believe how similar they tasted to a soft malt pretzel. They are chewy in the center, crunchy on the outside, and springy like a real pretzel would be. Before anyone asks how to make these without protein powder, I have no idea. I would just Google a soft pretzel recipe. I think it's fun to make higher protein versions of classic treats, so that's what I do. I have no idea how to make traditional pretzels. With this dough, you can also make cheese-filled pretzel sticks like you see here. It starts exactly the same way. Make your dough, refrigerate it, and then instead of rolling it into a rope, Create a rectangle about a quarter of an inch in thickness and just over the width of a cheese stick. The easiest way to accomplish this is by sandwiching the dough between two pieces of lightly greased parchment paper and rolling it out until it has reached your desired shape. This can make three of the pretzel sticks so you'll need three pieces or 72 grams of regular mozzarella string cheese that has been frozen. The freezing part is important here because it gives the pretzel more time to brown before the cheese is too melty and prone to seep out. Then lay down a cheese stick on top of the dough and using the parchment paper to help, Roll the dough over the cheese stick until you have gone around the entire circumference. Once you've made it all the way around, slice off the extra dough with a knife and repeat this process for the remaining two cheese sticks. This next step is the most important step of the recipe. You'll want to close up the seam as well as the two ends as best as you can. Any open cracks or gaps where there is cheese exposed is where melted cheese will escape when these go into the air fryer. Use your thumbs and fingers to work that seam into the rest of the dough to create one cohesive unit. 
Do the same with the ends by folding down the sides and closing them up. If you lightly roll it against your work surface, that can help as well. Creating your dough rectangle to be as close to the cheese stick width as possible will help make this step easier because you won't have so much excess dough at the ends. Take your time with this step to ensure that you have closed up any holes. If you find that your cheese is starting to thaw already, placing it back into the freezer might be a good idea before moving on to the next step. Just like with the regular pretzel bites, you'll want to place these pretzels into a lightly bubbling water that has been treated with baking soda for 30 seconds. Once they have taken their short salt bath, place the cheese sticks onto a piece of parchment paper and sprinkle over some coarse salt. Then you can place them into your air fryer basket, spray with a bit of oil, and air fry at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for 5-7 to seven minutes or until they are golden brown. You'll want to flip these ones over halfway through and check on them frequently to make sure that no cheese is seeping out and becoming out of control. Some cheese leaking is going to be expected, it's very hard not to have any occur. In my experience, skipping the water bath helps prevent this issue, but you lose that classic pretzel texture. You can see here that I had some minor leakage, but overall, not half bad. For all three of these cheese-filled pretzel sticks, you've got 412 calories and 32.5 grams of protein. Cheese-filled anything is probably going to be great, except for maybe, you know, vegetables. Those things are too far gone. And these cheese-filled pretzels are surely not an exception to that rule because they are spectacular. I've never tried batch prepping either the pretzel bites or these cheese sticks and storing them in Snack City, but my intuition says that they would not be good candidates. One of these days I'll try it out and report back. But if you're looking for a fun little snack to try out some night, either of these two options are a wonderful choice. The pretzel bites are a bit quicker and easier to make, but it's hard to beat cheese-filled bread so you can't go wrong either way. The recipe is included down in the description, and as always, if you try them out, let me know how it goes and send me a picture so I can take a look. Talk to you jokers next week. Bye!